Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues as we head to Hebron, Indiana. The head coach there is Todd Adamczyk. He joins us now. Todd, good morning. How are you? Great. How are you, Scott? I'm good, and I really do appreciate you joining me uh, in this what should be your downtime, the holiday season. But uh, I was made aware of what you're doing there in in Hebron, Indiana, by uh, the good folks. Well, in particular, Clayton McBride of McBride Mats. As a matter of fact, he has uh, helped outfit your wrestling practice room with all new wall pads and mats, and uh, it's it's absolutely a gorgeous room. How did that relationship start? Well, it started with us just knowing that we needed to get a, a outfitted again, get our room done. We searched around, and you know, it's not so much that that he had the the best quality, but he did have the best quality. He, it's not so often that you see a. I want to make sure I get my words right here. Um, a CEO of a company who is that involved. He he called us. He talked to us just about every day. Um, just he built a relationship with us. So a lot of times you you order something, it's online, you're dealing with the computer, but uh, he called us, dealt with us right over the phone and and built a personal relationship. Oh, I love that. So so that's where it all started. And uh, we'll just tell our, our viewers and listeners out there that you can check out uh, McBride Mats online as well. And we encourage you to do it. Great pricing and uh, outstanding customer service. And that's that's the experience. You, and that's a big it's a big step because you, you are in charge of fundraising for this effort. How did that all start and, and, and who all helped in the fundraising effort? The kids, the parents. Um, we begged the administration. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. We chased it for a while. So uh, the fundraising stuff never ends, as you know, with with all sports, but this sport in general, just we're always begging for money and doing everything we can to raise money and, and to, to build up and make it better and stronger. And they're doing it in Hebron, Indiana. Um, the, the school itself has about how many kids? Three, four hundred kids? We're about 360 kids, yeah. Okay, and that's Hebron High. Uh, so yes. a relatively small team, but the demand for excellence on the mat will not decline and the fact that you want to put kids on a mat that is safe and and the walls now are obviously uh secure we're going to show a video of that but it's all about safety making sure they have a safe environment coach how important is that for you well it's very safe um we we actually lost one of our one of our higher level kids had a had a concussion and we don't even know how in the world that happened and it was on some of our older nastier equipment so we said we got to do this fast. We got to do it, you know, as 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 best as we can, so we don't lose any more kids. But it was just during a workout. There was no one particular moment that caused a concussion. But we said let's let's fix this so it doesn't happen anymore, and we took care of it. And that's a proactive approach to an issue that we're dealing with nationally, and that, of course, uh, head injuries. So um, McBride Mats was an answer for you guys. Now let's talk about your history. Purdue University is where it really all started for you. It wasn't on the mat. It was in the classroom. And you excelled in uh, a couple areas. You're now a PE and health teacher at Hebron, Indiana. How long for you? Um, I've been in Hebron. This is my 10th year in Hebron, but I've been teaching 15 years total. 15 years. Per- I, okay, so this, this is what uh, maybe surprises some folks. Um, there was not a program for wrestling at Hebron High School, was there? No, sir. Was there a feeder program? We had nothing at all. We started from the ground up. How does a guy go about starting a program uh, 10 years ago where there was none at a high school level and then starting a feeder system that uh, in the middle school that helps to develop that high school program? Well, I walked into the athletic director's office and said, uh, I think we can make this happen. Um, there were some old mats that were lying around. I said, this isn't the best of stuff, but we can make it work and let's grow from there. Um, our athletic director encouraged us to write up a proposal, go to the board. Uh, our very first year, we operated as a club and not as a team. The following year, we uh, we had a, a junior varsity schedule and took off from there. 
Now, Coach, in the state of Indiana, as in, uh, I guess all states are a little bit different uh, with uh, athletic rules at the state level. How difficult is it to insert a high school program into the state competition? Um, you know, I honestly couldn't answer that. That would be more of a AD administration question. Okay. Um, it we fit right in as soon as we were were registered as a program and said we're varsity ready. We jumped right into uh, postseason competition. Wow, that is that's outstanding. So it, it it wasn't so. In other words, you had people working with you in administration and uh, people at the state. Obviously, you know know how to do it, but you were able to get competition right away. Yeah, um, like so many small schools out there, you have trouble filling all weights. What does that do to you uh, for competition? Well, it kind of stinks. Um, we walk into a gym and we're down uh, 24, sometimes 30 points walking in. So we try not to focus on dual meet wins as much as we do individual matches. And we tell the kids, just win your match. I said, if you win your match, you had a good day. I said, let's not worry about the team score because there's nothing we can do about that. So if we walk into the gym with, with say, seven or eight kids and we win seven or eight matches, we had a good day. And forget about what the team score says. I like that attitude, Coach, and it's, it's you. Uh, how, how important are Pat Fox and, and Troy Bush to the success of the program? Oh, gosh, they're huge. Uh, Pat's been with us uh, since the second year, and Troy's new, but his energy, he's a young guy. He's excited to be there, and these guys are huge for us. Gosh, there's no way I'd be able to do half of what we get done without those guys. One of the things you and I talked about off air was a young man named Anthony Somerville. Um, and Anthony's not a typical wrestler, is he, Coach? Oh, not at all. Gosh, he's, um, he's first chair flute in the band. Um, he, he had the lead role in the school play. He's, the, he's uh, president of his class. You, you wouldn't think he's a wrestler, but he's, he has the second best record on our team right now. Second. And he's... All right, yeah, so second a, best record on the team. He's he ranks third in his overall graduating class of four point one eight GPA. I think that's pretty special. It, it is special. A kid like that doesn't come along very often, and he's done that work himself. So there's we're, we can't take any of the credit for that. He's put in that work. He's he deserves that pat on the back. There's nothing we've done except for led that horse to water. He did all the drinking. Coach, I know his mom, Melissa, is on staff there as a Spanish teacher. Uh, what did she and, and Roy have uh, to offer as far as encouraging him into the sport? Well, that's exactly it, the encouragement right there. Um, I know his dad wanted him to get involved in sports, and, and he was a big part of that. His dad's a big guy. Holy cow. I mean, you'd hate to meet him in a dark alley. <laughs> Just a big, strong, physical guy. And right there, I thought, okay, if Tony's half of that, we're, we're going to have something to work with here. You're calling so, Anthony uh, Tony. I, I, I get that. Now, he started off at about, what, 230, Coach? He was about 230 pounds when we started the season last year. And just through practice, he cut down to about 190 and just cutting off all the, all the jello. Um, and then off season, he bought into what we were selling, you know, got to hit the weights, come to open, open mat time. And he, he bought what we were selling and he's about 210 now and he's got some meat on his bones. So Is he's, he's, he bought into what we're selling. And I get a, I can hear it's a night and day difference, but does he have a chance to make regional and maybe semi-state? Absolutely. Um, and we told him, I said, it, it's all up to him right now. So if, if he wants to, he can do it. It's, 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 it rests on his shoulders. So, Coach, so, here, here's, an, here's an opportunity as an example that we can show the kids that uh, you don't have to be – you're not going to jump in and be good at something right away. You've got to work at it. You've got to practice. Coach John Smith of the Cowboys of Oklahoma State will tell you you've got to do something 10,000 times before it becomes uh, a part of muscle memory. As a health teacher, you've got to sit back and go, wow, this sport really works at helping to build young people. Exactly that. Yeah. We tell the kids, don't practice till you get it right. Practice till you can't get it wrong. And that's, that's what he's doing for us. Now, as a teacher, you're also charged with making an educational, uh, the educational process fun. 
Uh, as a PE teacher, I got to believe you have a wealth of knowledge as far as how to make things fun. My PE teacher thought dodgeball was it. Uh, how do you encourage the kids to have fun, not only in the gym, but in the wrestling room? You got to mix it up. If you do the exact same thing every single day, they're going to be bored to tears. So you have to know the kids you're working with and their strengths and their weaknesses. And, you know, spend a little bit of time on their strengths so that they leave the room feeling good about themselves, even though you need to spend a lot of time on weaknesses because that's what's going to make them better. Coach Todd Adamczyk joins us in the Nike hot seat today. We were made aware of Todd and, and uh, the success he's enjoying as a as a, uh, a coach and a teacher in Hebron, Indiana, as the head coach and really the founder of the Hebron High School Wrestling Program and now the middle school program as well. Uh, how is the community embracing you? You know, we're starting to take off. When we first started, there were a lot of people that didn't even know we had a program. They didn't pay any attention to us, but... We're starting to make some waves. Um, like I said, our numbers are growing, especially with our middle school. We've got a big middle school program. So um, we're excited about the future. So the future really does look bright in Hebron, Indiana. Coach, uh, you know, I want to go back to Anthony uh, just for a moment. Anthony has said and, and aspires, I think, to, to being a computer or uh, electrical engineer. Does that make him a great candidate for Purdue University? You know what? We had that conversation, he and I, and um, he said that there's that's a strong possibility. So, yeah, absolutely. Have you talked I'd to, to Tony, Have you talked to Tony Urzel, the head coach there? He he may be looking for Anthony Somerville. What do you think? Hey, you know what? We may send them that way. I know they do a, a, a takedown camp in the summer. Um, my I've got I've got two boys in middle school that'll be going to that Purdue camp, and we may send Anthony with them. You do have two boys of your own, one uh, one daughter as well. What are the age groups? Um, uh, or gosh, what, like, what? <laughs> 13, 13 and 12. It's so hard to keep up because the, they, they keep getting older every day. <laughs> yeah, 13 we... and 12. <laughs> um, my, my middle boy is adopted from Guatemala, so oh. he's the same age as my daughter, even though he's a couple months older. And what are their names? Patrick, Matthew, and Jillian. And then you have a, uh, a youngster that's part of the family. Can you tell us his first name? Teddy. Teddy. All right. Well, it sounds like you got a full house there for you and, and your wife, uh, Hebron, Indiana. It's a community that is uh, embracing the sport of wrestling. Folks, we hope you found some encouragement in this interview. Uh, it's great having the conversation with Todd. Todd, we're looking to catch up with you on a fairly regular basis. We hope you help us make that happen because we like programs that are uh, what we call self-starters. And the, and the success generally follows in the athletes and the students that you produce that go on to college. Uh, that carry that uh, that work ethic. I got to believe you believe in that. Well, absolutely. Or else we wouldn't do what we do. Um, we're 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 getting there. Each year we grow. We get a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Our wrestling IQ in the room grows each year, and good things are on the way. So we we believe in what we do, and the kids are starting to believe in what we do, and the community believes in what we do. So we 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 leave feeling good at the end of the day. You've already thanked Pat Fox and Troy Bush by recognizing how important they are to the program. Who in your ath uh, athletic administration or administration overall at Hebron would you like to recognize? Um, well, Rhonda Walker was the athletic director when we first got started, and she was a big part of helping us get through all the paperwork, the things we had to do with uh, the school board. She was big in that, um, really helped us with our scheduling and all that, and me not knowing what to do. Um, we have a guy who's a history teacher, a guy named Scott Ericks, who has, he's, he's not an administrator, but I don't think he's missed a single meet. He's gone on the road with us. He's at everything. Um, just, he's a true wrestling fan and he's, he's at everything. So he's, he's been, he's been a huge part of, of our program. We'll dedicate today's interview with Todd to all the parents out there who are realizing the difference that this sport is making in the lives of their youngsters. And we appreciate the opportunity to talk with Todd in the Nike hot seat today. Todd, we hope you had a good time. Oh, I had a blast. I hope I didn't screw it up too badly. You're wonderful.
Todd. We appreciate the time. <laughs> for all of us at Takedown Media, thank you so much to our friends at McBride Mats for helping to make the interview possible. We thank you, and we hope to be bringing uh, a lot more of these type of interviews to you to show you how uh, you can outfit your room with new mats and keep your kids happy, healthy, and safe while practicing and making them, uh, well, prepping them for actual live competition. But it's guys like Todd that get it done. Todd Adamzik from Hebron High School in Indiana.